Well, here we are with another hour of attention deficit disorder of the Mick. And Mac, even though Mac is you. That's right, and you're Mick. I'm Mick. So welcome. Welcome to another week of madness. How, yes. How's your week, Danny? Your piece of shit car. Tell me about it. Uh, I'm having anxiety about it a little bit. More, <laughs> more gaffers tape I had on one it? Of those, I, I had one of those like little anxiety things today that all entertainers have where you're like, you know, the health insurance is due uh, tomorrow. You, you have health insurance now? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I got, the, I got a broker who says he's got me the best deal. Is it Obamacare? Well, it has to be. I don't make enough to actually pay for health insurance. There it is. <laughs> My dog no, has better be health insurance than Obamacare. I'm going to be paying. No, I'm going to be paying, but it's like 75 a month, but I don't know. I don't know how good it With is. With a $15 gonna. million dollar deductible? So yeah, So you right. can really use it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Anything, anything, anything is better, I guess, than nothing, right? Yeah. So uh, what about you? Yeah, my dog's my dog's healthy this week. He's yeah, not, he's got rid of the poos. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. My dog was like really sick. I mean, it looked like a super soaker of poop out his butt. Oh my god! <laughs> I've never seen my my dog or any dog do that. I, yeah, and, it was crazy. Did they find out what was wrong with him? Uh, yeah, he had a bug in his tummy, so he was taking. The funny thing is that the, uh, they take medication that is basically the same as ours. The antibiotics, the pain pills. Sure. Well, you yeah, know, yeah. some people uh, actually take uh, fish antibiotics when they get sick. Did you hear about this? No. Yeah, they go to the they go to the uh, pet store and they buy fish antibiotics and they take it when they get sick because fish. Uh, there's a certain one that you humans can take and it actually works. You got to be scraping the bottom of the barrel. I think <laughs> yeah. you go, go to the pet store and, <laughs> yeah, say, hey, and get fish antibiotics, which is most yeah. actors you know. and uh, <laughs> comedians. I, I go to my vet. I sniff his butt a couple of times and say, "Hey, can I have some uh, flagell or uh, you know tetracycline?" He goes, "Yeah, go ahead." Sure. There you go. But that's our yeah. guest, by the way. He 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 just magically showed yeah. up. Yeah, Mark, well, Mark, <laughs> Mark Mark Pellegrino. Uh, a friend and um, an amazing actor great actor uh, oh, and you. another you still coaching right I, I you know i haven't been teaching for a couple of years but still but i i i, I would like it. i've it's seen some of your students one of my favorite things in the they're world they're actually good actors really yeah you've seen them i have nice you've seen them work or you just no, like, i've seen their work oh good yeah yeah it was amazing because we started talking and it's like uh you know we, we talk shows and stuff like that and i go oh yeah i went to this guy's class and it was really good and i go like oh you went to mark's class mm. i go that's very cool <laughs> yeah which uh, students have you seen their, his work? I don't remember their name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to say Britt went to, um, I want to say Britt Sheridan went. Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Britt. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. And, and she ended up on Supernatural as a reoccurring character, which is funny. She was awesome. the werewolf girl, so I tried to get what her. What season her was that? I'm, I'm just now well, she was embarking in, on my, uh, uh, my binge watching of well, Supernatural. Well, she reoccurred last season. Oh, okay. Right? For, not up for a yet. brief, but then she was about three seasons before that. Okay. So. I'm only up to season five. Oh, Wow. Are you, when did you come in? Season five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've watched the other four yeah. seasons up to it. It's not like I just went bullshit, 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 my part. Well, that's what yeah. most people and do. You, got, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, you got, you got a great part. Lucifer. Lucifer. I mean, yeah. yeah come on, yep. man. Yep. The yep. devil. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That is very cool. That's a great, I'm, always a great part. I'm hearing some of the Supernatural fans are mad at Lucifer right now. What? Really? Yeah, because uh, he punched Sam in the face. Really? Yeah. And he, they're mad at him yeah, for that? Yeah, is, well, yeah. He's the devil. He's, this is what I say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and what I say to them is, he killed an entire town, women and children first. And you don't you, care about, yeah. But you get mad when he punches <laughs> Sam yeah. in the face. And, and, and to be perfectly honest, Sam is kind of whiny right now. He deserves to be punched in the face. <laughs> he's always whining a you little know, bit, I, isn't he? You know, for all those people caught up, you know, Sam wants to defeat the darkness, but he doesn't want to hurt his brother. Okay, come on. You know, can we have a little sacrifice, folks? <laughs> now, wait, which one's the Sam? Sam's the one with the car? No, no, that's Dean. Oh, that's, yeah, that's Dean. Dean. Sam's the other. Oh, yeah, yeah Sam's, Sam's the tall one. He is a, he is a little whiny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good looking whiny guy. I don't get that, man. He's always whining, and he always causes the problems, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Didn't he bring out the darkness? He, Didn't he cause the apocalypse? He did. So, he did. Right. Saving his brother from, you know, from the reaper, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, from, yeah, from death himself. And what do you do? You kill death. And most women would say, he's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> he is a complicated He's a complicated boy. man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's complicated. Well, you've done, like, so much stuff, dude. I mean, your IMDb goes on and on. What, what do you have, like, 200 credits or something like that? I mean, it's, yeah, it's you, you show there. up everywhere. Yeah, uh, see, I go back. I'm beginning to, to think, uh, I'm National think Treasure. I remember National you were Treasure. an FBI agent back then, weren't you? I was. What and was What was the show I saw you on where you were you and your wife put a hit on each other? Oh, that was a person of interest. Person of interest. Oh, that's right. Yeah, is that show on yet? <laughs> 
It's, I think it's still no. I, maybe you, it's just just I don't know. ended. It's, oh, I don't know. I like that show. I was I was kind of hoping it wouldn't. It's go a off. great show. Yeah. yeah. I think um, they had their last season, but maybe I'm that was the wrong. That was one of the more ludicrous uh, <laughs> show shows, just because of the you know. Come on, they put a hit on each other, then they get to get back together at the end it after was, they uh, yeah. <laughs> try we'll, to, we'll like don't, don't don't get too deep with it because <laughs> <laughs> you scratch below the surface, you're gonna see bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and let's see, you were uh, Jacob. I was Jacob. Hey, Jacob, yeah. unlost. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was great, man. I, when How you, are you not in Star Trek? I mean, anyone who shows up in a J.J. Abrams thing, all of a sudden, you know, you show up in every J.J. Abrams thing. I, it, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, look well, at that Greg. makes me feel yeah, fantastic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Greg Gumberg, right? I mean, well, when good, I, yeah. you know, I met JJ at the Saturn Awards, and, and oh, that's right. his response to me was, oh, you're my Jacob. So, I feel wow. like I wasn't even <laughs> on his radar. Oh, wow. wow. Well, that's a good story, dude. But you're, uh, you're, you're so idea. solid in every role I've seen you in. Oh, I mean, you're you. really solid. I mean, there's no there's no doubt in it, it, that you're that you're the character that, from everything I've seen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so, we, we were talking earlier about that before we got on the air about the Tomorrow People. Yeah. I love that show, dude. I thought it, it, we both agree. I think it should have had a, and I was, I have no stake in this, but I should have had a second season. Uh, yeah, I think it was starting to get get its legs underneath it. Yeah, I think oh, that's know. on Netflix. Yeah, I'm, okay, yeah, probably. Look, everything's on Netflix. I have dude. seen some of those. I think your yeah. wedding's on Netflix. Okay. <laughs> oh God, oh, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine's on YouTube, so you're all right. Is it really? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I was like, wow. I do find I do find uh, picture, wedding pictures of my wife and I online. Somebody has taken them from our oh, your, wow. your wife's our own an Facebook actress. Page. No. No? no she, I thought she was an actress. No, she's a director and a oh, writer. Oh, and, God forbid. And a teacher. I, I didn't mean to say that. Okay, then That's she's not better. an actress. It, yeah. she, she has acted. Okay. She acted at Williamstown and uh, Shaw Theater Festivals, and she's, she's done a lot of professional work. I think to be a great director, you have to do some acting. I, I, I think that would be good. I think you if, know? I think if most a, uh, directors uh, studied acting, they'd, they'd be better off for the experience. That's yeah, for sure. absolutely. Well, if they've been on both sides of the camera, they have much better understanding of what thing what happens. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it, mo- most directors don't do that. You know, no. they just kind of chess move you around on a chessboard and yeah, 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 kind yeah. of technically adept, but not necessarily speaking the language of treat the actor. You like, treat you like a muppet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even the great ones, you know, they just, you know, they know ninety percent of it is in the casting, and they let you do your own thing, and they're they're laissez faire about it. But the other ones really do need to learn something about acting. I just worked with the director recently on a show called Quantico, who needed some acting lessons for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I've ever gotten angry with a director who gave me a direction. Really? Yeah, normally I can translate what they say into my own language and then make it happen, or just nod my head yes and do what I'm going to do anyway. Right, right. Um, but this guy said something that just frosted me. And maybe he's listening right now. That would be fantastic. Well, I hope can, so. Can you tell us what that was? Yeah, he said, look. We can send him a link if he's not. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> I've pushed his name out of my mind, but um, I'm sure I could find it in, in no time Muster at all. It. He said, look, this this camera over there. See the camera over there? I said, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's at the back of a, a group of people, you know, and if I really searched for it, I could now find it and be self-conscious about it. <laughs> yeah. um, but he goes, that's going to be really tight on you. I want you to milk this. Milk this Oh, moment. my God. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, my God. He said milk this? Milk the moment. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Stunned silence for me. Wow. And, um uh, I had two choices to either call him out in front of, you know, the 85 extras that were there and his entire crew, which I think by that time it hated him, uh, or just smile and pretend like I didn't hear it and let it go. Wow. Wow. I chose That's just the latter. Milk it. I've never heard milk that it. direction. Milk, milk it. it. Now, now, people nowadays have 60 inch screens in their house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're essentially <sighs> in a movie theater. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is milk a close up. Yeah. You're going to read that from a million miles away. It was the stupidest direction I've ever heard, and I hate that. Milk, man. milk it. <laughs> so I can find his name very quickly. We can out him. Yeah, let's out him. All right, hold on a second. We're going. Wow. This is, thing. Is, is he, cool. I, t- I could tell you what he directed. He directed Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And I feel like he was, uh, felt like he was directing 12 year olds. And he, he, I actually felt like the directing experience for him was an ego trip. Mm. So he would come up to you and tell you something obvious very loudly so everybody could hear you. Oh. Uh, I think because he needed to feel like he was helming the ship. Right, right. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, God. but most I'm most hit directors I... they don't have to yell it out so everybody can hear it on the set. Which director was it? You want to thumb through these guys? Yeah, from sure. Yeah. No, or they just talk to you confidentially. Exactly. Yeah. They, they walk up to you, they whisper to you, or they talk to you quietly. It's like the it's like the screaming first ads. Tor, Tor, hello, Tor. <laughs> tor, just, tor Frudenyentel. Uh, Frudenyentel. Frudenyentel, hey, folks. I just want to tell you something, Tor. You need to go to acting school, buddy. And quit milking shit. Yeah, <laughs> and don't ever tell an actor to milk a moment. Wow. That's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> oh just my God. FYI, since you haven't seemed to have learned that in the two or three films you've done in your lifetime. You know, this, yeah. this is perfect because I just read a quote from George Carlin. Uh, because you're coming, you know, most people won't... The, most people, they won't even say anything about anybody in the business because they're afraid, you know, someone's going to hear, somebody's going to say something. But, you know, when, when someone does something like that, George Carlin said, he goes, I don't like ass kissers. Uh, somewhere along the way, someone's going to tell you there is no I in team. What you should tell them that is maybe not, but there's an I in independence, individ individuality, and integrity. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, George Carlin. Good old Come George. On. Yeah. A, you know, we haven't talked about him. We talked about comics a lot. His name kind of got left out of things because, you know, those seven words you couldn't say on television, radio, or whatever. Right? Well, you know, yeah. when, when we get Danny LaBelle on, uh, he actually interviewed George Carlin. Well, that'd be fun. He knew George Carlin. He had an amazing, amazing interview with him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's interviewed uh, Rob Reiner. He's interviewed... Uh, uh, God, everybody. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but all the all the old great comics. But we'll, 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 I just did a show with him, a CBS show yesterday on the radio, mm. and uh, we're gonna get him in here. It would have been good to get him in he, today with you. you all... You've been some in some shit that I really like. You know, really? I just decided that. You know, I mean, being human. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh right. right. And you are a ba you play some badass people, dude. You <laughs> always play badass. And I don't I don't find that being your normal personality yeah, yeah. when we're having you know when You're we're like, out having a bite to eat or something. I like repress that. it all. <laughs> <laughs> so it just comes out on on the screen, right? That's where it's safe. I won't yeah. get arrested. That's good. <laughs> dude, you, you know I'm sitting here looking at you and like you do like you kind of like vibe like Lucifer a little bit right now. It's like, <laughs> drink the wine, mellow out Lucifer. Okay, we've got more. You what know? is that? Is, yeah. Do I leave that? Is that first impression I for think, you too? No, I think what it is. Is, is that you've got that uh, you've got the opposite type of personality like you're very thoughtful you're obviously an, an extremely intelligent guy you, you think and you can see that you're thinking all the time and that scares people I think wow and I think that's what comes across in the characters. No, that's that doesn't. No, you just, I, I, no, I wonder just, if there was ever no. a time when that kind of quality didn't scare people, but actually, I don't know, turned them on a little. No, because you know what happens? People look at you. Cerebral and like, people, women, yeah, who are cerebral, that mm -hmm. turns them on. Yeah, they like okay. that. Yeah. They like that. Yeah. But I mean, I think people, what they're doing is like, oh my God, he's thinking, what, is he thinking something bad about me? What's he thinking about? Oh my God. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so people start to, you know, sure. you know, you're, and you, you're unbiased, you, you're like a real thinker, unbiased, but they, people in their mind, they're always thinking the worst. Yeah, sure. And it's great for a character like that, who the thoughtfulness comes across, I think, in every character you play, you know, that I've seen. And uh, that's why, as an evil character, you come across so well, because... But you fucking thought this out, right, Danny? I mean, shit, but, dude. You know, with You're the, like a therapist over there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so much better now. Do you, do you? But, uh, It'll I be think, $200. I think, I think with, the, with the evil characters, part of the trick for something like that is not thinking of them as evil, but... Exactly. Pursuing something human just like yeah. anybody else and, and trying to find... The good, yeah, yeah. And well, you come across with this dark. I mean, I've been talking dark sense of humor that just kills me. I, just, I <laughs> love you're fucking in, in, in uh, supernatural. You're Lucifer. That 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 very. E I mean, you're just fucking pure evil, man. You're like you make my first ex wife almost look nice. <laughs> but but you come across with a sense of humor that makes it fun. Yeah, I mean, it's really uh -huh. it's really good. It's uh, it's an amazing character. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they wrote him well. Well, I, well, there was really no improvisation in there. It's just that they wrote a character that had a great backstory, not Lucifer, but the, his vessel. Uh, yeah, and, but you got to take some credit because it's not, you know, the, all the improvisation comes in your facial expressions and how you yeah. talk and all, you know. I, I mean, I guess with the dialogue, you could be arch and, and huge, but um, I, it just felt like the material was very simple and mm -hmm. honest and, and that they'd given, you know, Lucifer a kind of wry sense of humor well, and I, I thought that was more effective as i yeah. watched the latest episodes um, and you've already shot them so you know you know you obviously castile right no uh, yeah cast yeah. it's called cast you know 
he he channels you really well. Your facial expressions and everything. He yeah. He actually apparently watched a few episodes, but then he came over to to our house there in Vancouver, and and um, I went over how I would you know approach some of the scenes and how I would you know handle the moments. And uh, he was a pretty good student. I've only seen one scene where he, he blows this guy up on the road, kind of snaps him into oblivion. Oh, it was pretty cool. And then he wipes his face off. Yeah. And the whole thing from wiping his face and tasting the blood yeah, out of curiosity, yeah, that, yeah. that is something that Lucifer yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. would, would really totally good. do. So I, I think he's doing a great job. And then my wife was on the set too. She was shadowing one of the directors and and uh, they were secretly texting back and forth in between takes. And so whenever he was doing a Markism that she thought wasn't quite one of my isms, <laughs> she, she put him on the right path. Wow. Well, right. you know, if she put him on the wrong path, you might. Yeah, you'd they might bring you back for the. <laughs> you know, I, might, the I might be coming. <laughs> you might. You might. Well, then, boof, he pops I'm out sure of you that. will be. You have to. Come on. You got to come back. I wonder how many trench coats he goes through, man. He has that white trench coat on, all cast does all the time, right? Yeah. And he just fucks it up all the time. Ward Road must have like 30 of them back there. Is that like a Steve the... Martin thing? White? It kind of, like... I don't know if it is. You know, I never thought about it because Steve Martin always shows up in, always white in a suit. White, white, yep. suit, white trench coat, too, if he's in one. No. When he's not wearing clothes underneath, right? Yeah. Well, not anymore. I think, I think you're just in your vessel's clothing permanently. Yeah. That <laughs> so that was Jimmy. Jimmy was his yeah. vessel. That's what he wore. I wore Nick's clothes even in hell you know you think i'd get yeah a new wardrobe better, <laughs> yeah. better wardrobe well shit hell. i hope i die in a nice outfit i mean when, right? you're, <laughs> when you're in hell stuck in the cage you know you could be showing up in a tuxedo or something like classy right you especially when you're inviting sam back down i don't know i'm i should be the king of hell right even though I'm oh but you're not crowley's the king of hell well, crowley's got something coming yeah, I bet he does. He is, he oh, you took care of his mommy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was so sweet. I, it's like, oh, my God. Don't tell him that you're the only one that can do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> and, and by the way, oh, I should put a spoiler alert for those people who haven't seen that episode yet. Okay, never mind. We'll just not go I there. think it's, uh, well. Yeah, hey, you I, know what? If you guys, are that, if, if you, if you guys are that much, get a late. therapist and then watch it anyway. Okay, right? Maybe, right? <laughs> yeah. Good show, though. Good 11th season. 11th. That's crazy. I don't know if it's been renewed. You guys know if it's been renewed. I haven't heard yet. I'm sure it will be. I mean, it's I mean, it's still popular. I mean, you the conventions you guys are doing are getting bigger. What do you what do you Huge. Cons- what do you consider your first big break? You know, I, I mean, I think Dexter was kind of in that realm um, yeah. because that's when people started to see me as a more complicated bad guy. And then you know, not too long after that, Lost happened. So I think Lost is the one that made people see me truly as something other than, you know, you're just this bad guy. That's that's why people wanted to cast me a lot. And and writing has just gotten more complicated anyway over the last few years. The more cinematic television is getting, the more complex the plots are getting, the more complex the bad guys are getting. So mm-hmm. there's elements now to the heroes that are really dark, and there's elements to the bad guys that are really light and interesting and, and sympathetic. So... Um, and that, I think, happened with Dexter, even though a lot of people thought that character was kind of an ass. Mm-hmm. Um, there, were, there, were, there was something about him trying to reunite his family in the clumsy way that he was trying to do it that really got people on his side, I think. And, and well, it's, it's exactly what you were saying before, is that no, even the most evil person you'll ever meet, they don't think they're evil. Yep. They, they, they are trying to do good according to their fucked up brain. Yeah. And so when you came across and lost, I was really impressed. Honestly, I, I was really impressed because I had never seen you before. And, and you know, my honest feeling about the Jacob character mm-hmm. is that I honestly felt he was an evil character. Yeah. My, my sympathies as a man, being an individualist, you know, uh, that I am, uh, and I, I was actually behind the man in black. The things he was, he was saying when I was sitting there in the scenes with him, I'd think to myself, well, that's fantastic there's nothing wrong with that he's curious he's interested he wants to see the world beyond here yeah he thinks his life is a value and that he, he should have a purpose beyond this mm-hmm. he doesn't believe in sacrificing yeah himself for for others or some grand design he's 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 an independent man and i loved that character i thought i thought uh, jacob was uh, represented the opposite you know that altruist stream that is in our society that endorses you know Killing some people for the sake of others as a good. Mm, right, as a right, good. right. Republic. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking, <laughs> Len. I'm joking. <laughs> well, as, as the rugged individualist. Give me your wine back. <laughs> as the rugged individualist I am, I'd say both. 
Yeah, right. I'd no, say it's Republicans no, it's true. It's true. Yeah. I didn't want to get into politics. No, but, you did it. You opened uh, the no, door. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just let Lucifer out, bitch. Oh yeah. We'll be talking about that in a minute. Revolution. Let's go there. Yeah. That was a fun little show. Yeah. I liked it. You're good. I did. You uh, didn't like it? Uh, yeah, that look in your face is like I don't know if you're gonna make me I, go I, poof or I, what. I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought Kripke had a little bit more in store for my character and I, I thought my I wish you'd been around would, a lot more, but you know. Well yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I just as an actor, you kind of want something to do, and you want to have an arc. You want to go somewhere, and and uh, I know Eric created um, Supernatural and and uh, loved the Lucifer character. So I thought perhaps there was there was something in that character with um, um, I, I'm forgetting the the other guy's uh, name, the David Lyons character. What was his character? Monroe? Yeah, something with the Jeremy and Monroe character that I thought was going to be deep and dark and 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 have a a, a much more twisted plot line that never seemed to come out. I don't know whether that's just because they, they didn't like what I was doing or, I, I, <laughs> or whether there really I was nothing that. to explore. I, I love the cast. Yeah. Great cast. I, it's a great premise, too. Yeah. I, 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 thought that I think was, it's closer than anyone thinks. Uh, premise, well, you know. You know, maybe. I mean, I'm storing up enough wine for the apocalypse. I don't know about you. <laughs> I've got the food, cans. Uh, yeah, or for the weekend. Cash and bullets, so just bring the wine over and we'll have a little apocalyptic <laughs> well, I'll, party. I'll, I've, got, nice. I've also got cash, silver, copper, and all those yeah, things. They will come over metals. to your place. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the bullets. Can I ask, how did you get into acting? I mean, did you always know? Did you go to, when you went to high school, did you know? Did you start in high school? Did you go to college? I mean, no, in high school, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Where was high, really? where was high school, Mark? Notre Dame High School, right in Sherman Oaks. Wow. Really? Yeah, yeah. The Sherm. The Sherm. The Sherm. Yeah. Is that what people call it? Or did you say <laughs> Dude, it's all about acronyms in LA. You know, no ho, we ho, you a ho, whatever. The you know? <laughs> yeah, I had no no interest in cinema or acting at all. Um, I, and, and even when I started it, I I think I kind of did it because it seemed like a great way to meet girls. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, I'm you know in my tw early twenties. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. That's kind of the primary value Absolutely. in your life at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely, and after divorce. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is what I'm going through. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm it's sorry. okay. It's. I thought you went through it. You're done. Huh? No, well, you're never over it. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a permanently <laughs> scarring. Especially, thing, especially when it? you have a kid. <laughs> so, oh. I, I love my son. I'm glad. I'm glad. But yeah. anyway, um, so you, marine biologist. That's kind of an altruistic kind of thing. Uh, well, you know, I, I kind of bought that ideal hook line and sinker when i was a kid i think everybody's more or less so you had great imbued parents, with obviously. that value system no i, I couldn't say that I, <laughs> I think i came from a my mom was a, my mom was a great lady you know in, in spite of her limitations but she's largely a single mom and you know the men that flitted in and out uh, of my life were not very productive or helpful to right. me so right. i mean the good thing about that is if there's something to be said for growing up in a broken home is that it it, it influenced me to to search out, you know, meaning for myself and to find mentors in my life that would help me al along the way and, and give me clarity. It, it made me passionate about clarity in, in almost every aspect of my life. So there's, there's something to be said for that. That's but, a lot. No, that's amazing. Because I wish most people had that because, I mean, look at the world. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean there's your your first role. I'm going back to your first role. Oh man. my God! Do you know what it is? Of course, on IMDb because IMDb is always also accurate. You're right. For all you all you listeners out there, IMDb is kind of accurate. I, IMDb had me at yeah. almost 60 years of age about five years ago. Until I got something <laughs> yeah. to change it. Yeah, now it's your 75, so it's good. Yeah. Um, let me think. My first project, it's either going to be Fatal Beauty, close, or. No holds barred. What are they putting up there first? Death Wish Four, the Crackdown. I didn't think that was my first movie. Well, now they're both in '87, Fatal Beauty, and that. So you know they they could have listed them separately, but uh, then they 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 show you up on L.A. Law after that. L.A. Law. And then the then, now that's where I had a real acting experience, even though I was a punk that was <laughs> that was doing bad things to this one of these lawyers in in the bathroom uh, and get interrupted by Jimmy Smith. Uh. Uh, I was the first time on film that I had an experience with another actor where they frightened me for real because I thought they were really angry at me. He comes in and he sees me harassing this lawyer and he gets so mad, he beats up my friend and smashes me into uh, one of these uh, mirrors. And Jimmy Schmidt. Jimmy Schmidt. And I, I, I was terrified of him wow. when he walked in and saw what I was doing. 
it, it was a very, very <laughs> real experience wow. for me. Yeah, and that was the first time I ever worked with uh, Greg Hoblet, who uh, ended up directing a bunch of feature films. Mm. Primal, wow. Primal Fear being one of them. Oh, oh them. great movie. Ed Norton great. launched Ed Norton's career. Yeah. I would have loved to have that role. <laughs> right? you, Danny, you'd love to have any role. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. But Dan, Danny, does, I'll say this with Danny. Danny's been a comedic uh, guy back in New York City, booked a lot of acts, and and he's got uh, he's got this little 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 web series, which is actually the premise is funny. Who shot the Bible salesman? Mm-hmm. It's about a Bible salesman who shows up, right? It's about uh, two neighbors who every episode they accidentally kill someone. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious! And halfway through, they find out that they were evil and deserve to die. Ooh! And one of the neighbors is a cop, a dumb cop, right? He's uh-huh. a drunk, and He's so a... they throw the body in his yard. Yeah, right? yeah, and and he takes credit. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great little premise for uh, you know, and uh, and his so, yeah. partner is actually a real he's a real cop he's a good cop and he's by the book cop and he's like how the hell do you keep getting these guys you're an idiot <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> well he's not that dumb right no and well he is pretty dumb because he doesn't even know where the bodies are coming from he can't figure it out in fact he in, he asks my character to help him at some, at one point uh Bring him to a different location so so that it doesn't look like he's killing everybody in his yard. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Doogie Hauser. Yeah, man. When Neil Patrick Harris, yeah. my president, he was by a, the way, he was my president. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I'm a member Comedy of the Magic, Magic. Castle. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So he was our president of the castle for uh, three years. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, he's my president. And this is when he's prepubescent. I'm looking at his picture. Yeah. So what'd you do there? Do you remember? I think I was bullying him in a pool hall and he hit me in the nuts with a <laughs> with a pool cue. Now, how, did, did you Fairly have to wear a ridiculous. cup for that scene, or I, I don't remember? It was so long ago. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we're talking back late eighties, early nineties here. Yeah. Wow. wow, that's crazy. How old were you when you got into acting? I was uh, twenty-three. Wow. Yeah, and and like I said, it was it's sort of luck uh, or happenstance. I, I I don't know what you'd call it, serendipity. I, I was into college to become a marine biologist, didn't think I had an aptitude for science, and actually dropped out of school with a 4.0. Wow. And um, That's when I drop out. I, well, I dropped out. Well, that's yeah. the best time to drop <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to drop out when you're on top. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's like when you're an actor, you get an Oscar. Just go home. Right exactly. Now. That's, that's it. it. You're a boxer, you, you're a champion, you, you, that's it. Undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, I just kind of drifted around uh, for about a year or so and, and then saw an advertisement for for a place called John Robert Powers, which is a, a modeling school. And I, I said, ah, that might be a way to make some money. And uh, I didn't have to pay them anything. I went through their silly school. and um, Well, that's rare that you don't have to pay. There, there are right? a lot of scams out there. It, it, it's, it. it's kind of a scammer place. Uh, 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 but they also had a commercial workshop class that they gave me for free. And that teacher thought I had something and set me up with an agent. Wow. So I actually started acting in Fatal Beauty um, before I even knew how to act. Mm. And uh, and then got into a theater company uh, because my agent gave me a list of theater companies and schools, said, uh, well, you're doing okay on auditions, but you're not closing anything, so maybe you need to learn some craft. Mm. Right. And I just picked one that was close and cheap, mm-hmm. and it happened to be, I think, one of the best theater companies um, on the West Coast. And wow. Playhouse West, and uh, oh yeah, That's... and I studied with uh, Robert Carnegie, and for about a couple of years, I sat in on Sandy Meisner's classes. And, oh uh, my God, That's, yeah. that must have been amazing. It, it was. I, I mean, it, it, it was. It How old was, was he at that point? He was in his late eighties. So wow, it, it was amazing to listen to him. It was disappointing to see the caliber of people that joined his class. Yeah, right. They were interested in having Sandy Meisner's name on their resume. Yeah. They weren't so interested in developing their their craft, and, they, and they were nasty, back, backbiting Hollywood assholes oh, to each other. Wow. Yeah. Very competitive, very mean-spirited, and awful. Wow. No, 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 no. And, and I say that uh, with no shame. They were yeah. awful. Yeah. Awful human beings and awful actors. Wow. And what I ended up doing was uh, I would set up his microphone, and I would sit by, his, uh, by the speaker, and, and I would listen to him talk. Then uh, students would go up and, and act, and I would leave the building, uh, for 10 minutes until they were done, and then I would come, <laughs> come back in and sit and listen to Sandy's critique. That sounds like me when I was booking stand-up. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd walk out of the room. Well, I, I started to feel like their acting was contaminating me, you know? I, yeah. I was young and impressionable, and I, everything, you know, w- would affect me. And, and to see people doing what they were doing on stage, no human being should have witnessed it. First of all, I felt bad for Sandy. I think yeah. it, it cut off a few years of his life. I have to witness <laughs> that. Uh, but uh, it was having an effect on me. And, yeah. And so uh, I, I would just say. Have, have you done theater lately at all? In the last uh, few I, years? I did uh, Twelfth Night. Oh, wow. I played Malvolio. Oh, nice. That's a great role. Yeah, my wife uh, and I had a theater, uh, had a Shakespeare theater company in within Playhouse West. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. And she's a te- she teaches Shakespeare. And uh, so in the off time, the two weeks or so I had between the Tomorrow People <laughs> and uh, the Returned, we went back to uh, California from Va- uh, from Vancouver and put up Twelfth Night for about five shows. Oh, that's so cool, dude! That's great. Yeah. I love theater. What what yeah. what spurred you guys to do that? Um, there you know, are she, there are artistic she, people. She loves Shakespeare, and I st- one day I said I've always wanted to do Hamlet. She said, "Oh my God, let's do it!" And um, that's the theater company formed out of that effort, which was a two year period of time where I read Hamlet twice a day for two years and rehearsed the scenes over and over with everybody in the ensemble cast, which changed periodically because it's L.A. theater. We're not paying right. anything. So it took a long time to assemble the cast. And once we got it together, we, we did it for about, I'd say, two or three months on the weekends. And uh, it was a devastating experience. I mean, good devastating. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel sort of conceited in saying this, but I think my wife was able to synthesize Shakespeare with the Meisner work. And so what we did was, I thought, very much connected to action and doing my Hamlet was very active and uh, was was very clear. And um, by all accounts, you know, people would come in there who had never seen Shakespeare. People would come in there who had watched Shakespeare all their lives and said it was the clearest, cleanest Shakespeare they'd ever seen. That's awesome. And the same with uh, with uh, Twelfth Night because we applied the same principles. I'd actually like to see you on stage. I've never obviously got to experience that. Yeah, that would yeah. be a, that would actually be amazing because you know when you're on stage, it's just it's just a whole different animal. I mean, you're so immersed in the character because it's you know in film you can just you know pick up the words that you know a couple days before rehearse go in and you know and that's what happens with a lot of TV. But theater, you rehearse and you rehearse and you rehearse and you're so so into the character into that world that it's just an incredible experience it, yeah i mean i think i think but i think the reason like leonardo dicaprio makes such great movies and daniel day lewis makes such great movies is because they spend the majority of the day rehearsing the scene that they're doing yeah for hours and hours yeah. and hours yeah. and hours until it's in them flawlessly and then they shoot it for yeah. a couple hours which is cool that's yeah, the way they, it should be get, yeah. that's you, the way it you, should you become be. the character yeah you become the character you know the character yeah right? yeah I mean, dude, you still got that Satan vibe right now. I feel kind of, I'm like, I have to have another glass. <laughs> I'm sitting next to Mark Pellegrino, folks, and I feel like I have to have another glass of wine because I'm feeling a little bit evil right now. Just <laughs> rub it off. You're, you know? you're feeling like you want to do something evil now, or are you just feeling like I'm glad you've I'm been slimed over here. by evil? Yeah, no, no, no. I just, I feel the, it just, it's kind of like itching powder, and it's starting to unnerve me. I'm going to come on. Yeah, I might snap Danny's neck before the end of the podcast, but <laughs> wait a minute. That's like every podcast, right? So good for you. Emotionally, yeah. yeah. Emotionally. Yeah. Snaps my yeah. neck every podcast. So worst experience. Worst experience besides um, uh, Thor. Yeah. I'm going to call him Thor. Call just, him Thor. Yeah. Because I, you know, Thor is The mighty Thor. Yeah. The mighty. <laughs> the mighty Thor who milked the part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's giving him too much credit, I think. Giving him Thor. Yeah, that's... I, look at, I, I, I look at his IMDb. He's actually shooting a lot of. He shot Arrow. He, he directed Arrow. Super Did he really? Arrow, yeah. He's, I actually he's like starting that to get series. some gigs. Yeah, I like that. Well, I, maybe you know when he says he directed that, maybe one episode too. Also, then. he did direct. What was the thing that he directed just before ours? He directed. A sh- uh, I don't remember what show, but it was not put on the air. I don't know that it was because of any malfeasance on his part I, I think too it much be, milking it was too close to <laughs> too much milking <laughs> yeah I, I think it was too close to some kind of incident that happened a terrorist incident and they took it off the air but um, the worst experience hmm I remember before I did uh, this movie called The Hunted I was um, I was working on this 
show, and Frank Langell was the main character on it, and he and I got along fantastically. And uh, he he's an amazing. I think he's a great actor. Who's this now? Frank Langell. Oh, okay. I think he's a great actor, but he's also a great acting teacher. And we would talk about acting all the time. And it could have been that he was, you know, working me as his character because I was supposed to have a father-son kind of relationship with him. But whatever it was, it it, it worked. I was very uh, enamored of him. And he found out that I was going to be doing this movie with uh, William Friedkin directing. And the first words out of his mouth were, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't be incriminating Frank Langell on this, but he's a pretty independent guy, and I don't have a feeling he'd be concerned by this. But first words out of his mouth were, certifiable. (laughs) 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 I said, what? He said, yeah, uh, Billy's certifiable. Wow. Well, I didn't believe it. It's Hollywood, you know? Yeah. uh, But... But then I actually worked on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was right. And, and Billy's kind of, he, he does not have, he's a very smart guy, and he can be very kind. But he does not have that device that I think most people have that filters out the subconscious. Or, or that holds back the id. Let's yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So whenever he feels something, it happens. It's you know it. Down. Right. So my first day of shooting, they do something that I think is very bad to do to a first day uh, actor on a set that's been already up and, and running. They give me lo- these long two pages of speeches that I have to do, which I, you know, um, and they're complicated uh, FBI speak, which I hate more than anything. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that procedural shit. Yeah. And I always got the first goddamn page right and ended up going blank every time on the second page. <laughs> so the first time it happened... He's like, cut, all right, let's do it again. And so we do it again. And the second time it happens, he says the same thing. Third time, he's like, all right, Mo. Yeah, he calls everybody Mo. You better sit down on that chair and memorize these lines, Mo. Uh, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Billy, I, I, uh, I know the lines. It's just that, you know, it's, it's not my way of speaking, so it's not happening, uh, at, at, you know, spontaneously. And I have to really think about it, and you don't want it that way. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You want it to come out. You know, with a kind of bureaucratic flow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like it's diarrhea. Tommy Lee Jones. Mouth, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. he can do Tommy that. Tommy Lee Jones, yeah. He, and he, he was on that movie, and he, he, he can do that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, he, he still kept screwing up. He's like, he started kind of flipping out, and I said, look, that's not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> so do me a favor. Yeah. Just, just put a thousand-foot mag on that camera, let it go, and let me just keep going over the speech until I get it right, and that's what we did, and it, finally sorted out and I didn't get the worst of Billy's wrath because he he can get crazy unmanageable wow. I think with some people like there's a story of the actress in Jade I don't remember her name but she uh he wanted her emotional in the scene and she just wasn't doing it it was she she couldn't she couldn't do it and so he, he she was sitting on an apple box because the camera was close to her and he he walks up to her in between the take and he says do you trust me she says sure Billy of course are you sure you trust me of course I do. I, I, yes, of course. Smack! He hits her as hard as he can across the face. <laughs> knocks her off the apple box. Grabs her by her lapels. Slams her back onto the apple box. Says, roll! They start rolling. She's crying hysterically now for the scene. But it's unusable because she has a, a welted handprint oh on the God. side of her face. <laughs> and there's the story with uh, Ellen Bernstein, you know, when, wow. when, in, during The Exorcist, when uh, where she first discovers her daughter's possessed and her daughter slaps her and she flies across the room. Well, there was a grip pulling her uh, on, a, on a rope and, uh, and she, had a, she had a bad back, you know, and, and so she said in between takes, she said, Billy, he's, he's really pulling too hard. Can you, can you tell him to ease up just a little bit? He says, sure, sure. He goes to the grip and says, do it harder, Mo. <laughs> oh, fuck. And that's the take that they used. And watch wow. her face when she hits the ground. Watch her oh. face. That's an expression that you cannot fake. Of pain. Yeah, that, of pain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's not acting. That's reality. That is Wow, real. that's a shame. I, Crazy I knew, stuff. When I first moved to New York, I knew an acting teacher that was like that. I, it was my first acting class in New York. And basically, by please, the end of Please the, give us a name. Esther. Not Bill know, Esper. 
No. What, what, what is it with you, man? I mean, you are Lucifer. I mean, I ask him, she's like, no, I can't name names. No, she's probably gone by now. She was pretty old. <laughs> you're, you're oh, it's a she. Yeah. Okay, you're going to get a phone call. Uh, Esther, oh, man, I can't remember it now. But I based my char- one of my main character in my one-man show on it, and I called her Esther Ballstones, because by the end of the <laughs> class, she busted everybody's, everybody's balls so bad that they were crying. I mean, even the guys, they were crying. And I'm looking at them like, what the hell is going on oh, here? That's so I'm like, awful. this is... This is not, you know, I mean, she had she had that insanity, but she got what she wanted out of the actors, but she got it in a way that was just like you're hurting people. You're you're actually scarring people for life. It's a very that's a very powerful position being an acting teacher and it's not something that someone should take lightly because the actors, I mean, look, I think we I, I don't mean to critique you. Let me just speak for myself and some of the people that no, I know. No, critique him. I want you to critique <laughs> well, him. Fuck I, it, critique him. I, mean, I think most actors yeah. kind of go into the game because they're a little fractured and there's something missing and there's an emptiness there that they need filled. And and they look to an acting teacher for guidance and, and what they get is this kind of Mephistopheles character, you know, that that just destroys Brandis. them. Brandis. Oh, Sorry. Oh, what, what was the first name again? Esther Brandis. Esther Brandis. May she burn in hell forever. Actors, actors. Yeah, well, when you see her, just talk to her. I'll, I'll do yeah. more than talk to her. Actors <laughs> Advent. That's actors what it was called. Advent. I remember now. Yeah, and they, so these acting teachers can become tremendously uh, manipulative and power, power, drunk on their power and, yeah. and do terrible things to these poor, vulnerable people. So, I mean, I always considered my position as an acting teacher as something that was very sacred and, and I had people's lives in my hands and that I should be gentle with them because life hadn't been gentle on them. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be actors. It's yeah, true. Yeah. It's true. Yep, yep. I know a couple of people and I won't, I won't name names because, you know, legal, there's legal things here. You know, what I'm about to say is like, you know, he kind of abuses his power. I know that he sleeps with several of the, you know, I know at least several girls that he slept with, right? I know acting teachers that do that. And I, don't, yep. I don't like that. Yep. I don't like people that do that. I don't like producers that do that. What's I, their you know? pitch, by the way? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talking to Danny. Who He's goes, on the market now. I'm, I'm, I'm just down. trying to learn. <laughs> Seriously, he, got, he, he dated a supermodel. Her, her, her claim to fame was she, she stabbed him and didn't kill him, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was dating this girl. I told you she liked you because she, she missed all the yeah. organs, she the vital organs. She slashed my arm with a steak knife, and then when I ran for the door, she stabbed me in the back with another steak knife. What she, the she missed, hell? Yeah. Dude, she missed your kidney. She really liked Barely you. Barely missed my kidney. Yeah, see? Barely. Barely. Um, Today, she's a surgeon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's still a model for Ford. Uh, and she hasn't been arrested. She was arrested. Yeah, she uh, absolutely. That time she was arrested. Oh, yeah. Because if she's done it that time, you know she's done it many more times. Well, she apparently she had accused it, um, many men of rape, and uh, I got a call from a private investigator a few months after the incident, and they're like, "Can you come and testify?" I said, "No, I will give you the police report, and I never want to hear from you again." She goes, "That's great." Wow, that's kind of crazy. Good. Well, yeah. okay. So you're. I'm thinking like there's a there's something down there I should learn from this. Don't date crazy bitches with knives. I don't know what is it. Well, you know that's not exactly what she advertised at the beginning of the relationship. So <laughs> you guys didn't have like tender back there, right? No, God, no. We, yeah. Come on. I met her at a. We were, at a we were talking audition. about this. We were talking about this last oh. week, right? All the uh, dating. There's some girls on the end. Some actresses on there. We're talking about dating applications. You mm. know, all the tender, the swipe left. I don't understand it. You know, oh, swipe, the, oh, okay. The swipe left. They're all swipe left now. I, I, They're all. What does that mean? Yeah. yeah that means thank you, Mark. There's I'm a glad. picture. Okay. There's a picture <laughs> well, on Mark's the screen. Mar- Mark's married first of all, so yeah. There's a picture on the screen, and if you like her, you swipe right. If you don't like her, you swipe left. Based on the picture, they, that's the quick way. Mm-hmm. But then you know, girls are like, oh, he's they. They're like, he's got to look and read all my stuff because if you try to respond, give message him, and you don't refer to something in their twelve page paragraph their they bio <laughs> yeah <laughs> then They're, you don't even get an answer because they've got all the options and the guys are just like looking for the hottest girl on the thing but mm. swipe left means you swipe the the picture to the left and they go out of your database that's <laughs> wonderful okay enough of that so yeah um so uh, mark <laughs> let's go back to something that, that i i like mostly politics you're starting your own political party yeah let's hear about that yeah i already started it and uh it's got a name that's going to drive no, some people crazy, i fucking I love it you do i the I'm a, because I, you know if i'm a star trek character what character am i i'm a ferengi okay you're a ferengi i am if as you, long as yeah. the name isn't trump <laughs> It is not. No, 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 no. In fact, I can tell you that our party would be very anti-Trump. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very anti most of the people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Out there in the in the field. 
I would say anti all of the people in the field, but I'm giving some the credit of being the lesser of evils. Uh, yeah, the party is called the American Capitalist Party. And if anybody wants to check it out, they can go on my Twitter page, Mark R. Pellegrino, and they, the, the, uh, the web page is right there. Just tap on it, and I'm sure you'll find a home there if you're disgruntled left and right yep. with, uh, with, with the situation in politics. Is that me? What is that music? What, is, what are we hearing? I don't know. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You know what? I didn't have my phone on. I'm sorry. My dog, my dog just... Actually, Your dog turned on the stereo. You, you, guys think I, <laughs> you guys think I'm kidding. I just got... My, I've got a camera in my home. My dog been sick. So, I mean, that... Ah, oh, little buddy. So, it, I guess he's watching something very noisy right now. It's like, what? I didn't think this had sound in that soundboard. Oh, that's so cute. You can watch him. Oh, yeah. It's live. That's, that's, that's live. That's awesome. He can also, Ten second delay. Actually. He can also fuck with him. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a siren. You know, oh, really? I, I don't. I don't put the siren on. He's sick. I'm not going to do that to my dog. And I do that to you. The sirens to distract him if he's doing anything funky in there. Yeah. Well, if, if I see because if it's motion detected, so somebody walks by and I and I'm gone, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say the dog and I are gone. It's like, oh, someone's in my apartment. I look. I can either hit the siren or I can hit the emergency call, which sends nine one one to my apartment. Mm-hmm. Can you change the lighting too in the room? I do that. Yeah. I one time I I, I have the uh, Hue H U E lights. Uh huh. So you can change the colors. Oh wow! From so, your phone. Right? So like my, I had like over by him was green on one lamp and red on the other. Oh wow! Now the dog seen black and white. They say, but he was kind of spaced out a is little this, bit. Is this is this digital digital life or whatever? The yeah. AT and T. I have that too. Now. Yeah, isn't that great? It's fantastic. Yes. What's it called? Digital life. Digital life. I can see people, whoever comes to my door, wherever I am in the world. So if I'm in France mm-hmm. and I want to see, uh, you know, if our dog sitter or pet sitter is coming there on time, how long they're staying, I can I can tell how long they're there. That's good for so babysitters. We, so we yep. hit your we hit your low, you, the the part in, in your acting career you didn't like. What's the high? What, what do you think? What is your the, wait? We were, the, ta- we were talking about fun. his political party. Oh, we're going to go back to the political party. Oh, this right. is an ADD for a reason. All dude. right, I'm all just right we got to. We're flitting around. <laughs> yeah, like moths. Well, if we don't do that, people go like, "Why do they call them self attention deficit disorder? <laughs> why are they so focused today? Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. wrong with what what this? I can't listen to this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, we took our Adderall. What the fuck's going False on? False right? advertising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, I don't know that I've ever hit my potential in film or TV, to be honest with you, or done what I'm capable. Let's just say funnest role then. I think some of the most fun I've had uh, is was this part on The Closer. Uh, oh, you did Ka- an amazing job. Uh, that you were Kara Sedwick. Kara, what is yeah, Kara Sedwick, gay, gay attorney. Gay attorney, dude. You got an <laughs> Emmy nom for that, didn't you? Well, the producer submitted me for an Emmy. You should have got an Emmy nom for that. That was an amazing role. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, see, I forget all the shit you're in. I was like, holy, that was you. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts. And I, I'm kind of hoping that Gavin finds a home somewhere in major crimes, too, because. Oh, yeah. He was a pretty cool character. Yeah. that Honestly, that it was a very cool character. I would like to see him come back. Me, too. Yeah. That was. He's really the only difficult. character, too, to, to, you know, figuratively bitch slap. Uh, Kira's character. Wow, he, nice. He, he got the better of her in, in pretty much every exchange. So now the most had. important question of this podcast, do you want Zinn this time or do you sure, want some I'll more go for, I'll go for the Zinn. You're going to like the Zinn. Yeah. I've this only is... cooked with Zinfandel. Oh, really? You, you cook? I do cook. I cook also. I'm, I mean, I'm not a chef. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, by the numbers guy. I can't, I'm not a creative wizard, but I do cook and I enjoy it. And I like to drink wine while I cook. I like to drink wine anyway. It's an antioxidant, right? And my, I told my doctor, I said, you know, I have one serving a day, and the fact that it comes in single serving sizes <laughs> is, a, is not my problem. <laughs> 750 milliliters. Look, at if they'd have put a screw cap on this, I'd have figured I could have had a glass, right? But it's a bottle. It's 750 milliliters. I, I burn the cholesterol out of my system. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's I, like that's, that's actually very good. It's a sweet. Yeah, this is a, it almost uh, has a maple yeah, uh, Todd Taylor. Uh, wow, Todd like Taylor this, out of Sacramento. I like the smell too. Wow. Which I would you know, said Sacramento. The only thing that comes out of there is shit. Oh, that's the no, that's the politics. But um, well, can I just say something sure. on that note? Uh, when I was going up to um, uh, Vancouver to to do the Tomorrow People, I drove up there with my dogs because I knew I was going to be there for quite a long time. And we stopped in Sacramento. It was one of the cities we stopped on, and I did let my dogs defecate. On the Capitol lawn? Yep. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did not clean it up. That's awesome. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. That's just too funny. <laughs> I don't think I've ever let my dog shit on any lawn. I didn't pick it up. But I honestly, next time I'm up there, which will be next week, because I'm, I, you know, I'm going up there because my medical plan is up there still. It's going to be moved down here um, after May, but I have to have a total right knee. 
Oh, my Lord. Yeah, not fun. So uh, for March and April, I'll be in Sacramento. And then, mm. I, then I come back down, I'll be gimping until probably July. But uh, then I'm, I'm, I just can't deal with this. I'll meeting. be walking your dog. There'll be, a, <laughs> there'll be a lot of people walking my dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I got to walk that little boy about, he's got to go two miles a day or he gets, he's, he's 50, 55 pounds, German short hair pointer. Mm. And he is eight years old. And I thought, you know, by now he'd be calming down. Mm, and yeah. you guys want a German short hair pointer uh, to buy one. Let me tell you, the, when, when, the, when, the, when the guy said, oh, no, they're great dogs. You know, they're real mellow. Yeah, after like 11. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, he's well, awesome. I love No, no. Curly. One of the most passionate. I mean, 55 pounds, he thinks he's a fracking lap dog, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he that. does. He really does. So, so I got to talk something to you real quick, right? Monster School, right? You heard of that? Yeah, that? I have heard of that. Hold on, hold on. What's going on with old Monster School? What's this? Well, we, we did get award. that. We did get an award, an Atelier Award for that. An Atelier Award, Monster And the first School comic Project. book's out. Uh, we're going to be doing some other things. I What I wanted to tell cool. you is, you know who Tony Lee is, right? Tell me. Tony Lee, uh, big comic book guy, wrote Doctor Who, Battlestar Galactica, very okay. iconic, three times New York bestsellers list for uh, novels. Fantastic. Um, he is writing the dark version of that story. It's so uh, I have the vanilla version. Okay. He has the dark chocolate. Nice. And they're going to parallel each other and cross over in certain points. Mm, lovely. So that's what's going on. It's actually still going forward. This is, you know, when you, uh, you know how hard it is to fund stuff in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. To try funding a franchise in three years. Oh, no. Oh, that's he, no problem. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, for all the actors, all the actors, by the way, all, all, shit, there's like 60 some actors have stuck with me and I haven't had anyone drop out. They, they understand what's going on. They're great people. Doug Jones, Claire Kramer, Tony sure. Todd. Sure. And some more people are coming in that are real fun that you'll like. I mean, we just had Gary Graham not too long ago on the- Gary's uh, a great guy. He likes to he likes to smack the table. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You I, were, could, you I could were, see you Gary there, right? slap smacking the yeah. table. Yeah. Well, it, you know, and, and we have Ryan in the in the sound booth over there, right? Ryan's in the sound booth. Hey, Ryan. And Gary was like, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, and, boom, and Ryan's head's just kind of like, you know, he's kind of twitching at the end, like he had, like he was having epilepsy. It was weeks cancer. before he recovered from the neck. Gary, so, and, and, Gary and I actually worked together. Yeah, you have. We worked on uh, what was that show with Lorenzo Lamas? Oh, that's right. You guys were on. What the hell I was forgot that? About oh, that. Lorenzo! I forgot. Gary told me about that. Um, you know, Lorenzo started doing stand up. Really? Yes. Yes, I saw him at the comedy store. How, I almost uh, didn't recognize. How was he? I, he, no, he's he's okay. Okay. he was okay. hosting. Yeah. He was hosting. When, he was. Uh, he never eats. Look, he'd be more concise. No, he was like shit. Well, no. Here, all right. First of all, the first. I don't know how long he'd been doing it. So he's obviously he hasn't been doing it as long as me or You're just a, a lot pleaser, of other guys. Dude. So did he look like he was doing it for long? No. 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 He, no. He, well, but he was hosting too, and hosting's hard. Man. Hosting's hard. Hosting okay. is hard. Oh, it's yeah, harder. Yeah. It's harder than doing. Oh, he a was set. hosting. You yeah. Know. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I it's no. They're it's both. They're both very hard. But as a comedian, I can tell you. From me, my my standpoint, it's harder to host because you can't. No, well, you don't have like when you're doing a set, you can you can get to know the audience. You take your time. You have you you're not going to be interrupted by comedians. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So you you get your your beginning, middle, and end. And when you're a host, you're going to be talking. People are going to talk to you more because they think, oh, I get to heckle the host, and the host is going to fuck me up. And you know what I mean. So it's it's a little little bit more difficult. So he got thrown into deep water uh, way before his time. He, did, he didn't yeah. do that. I think I think people were pretty respectful because it was a bringer show. You know what a bringer show is? No. It's where there's a lot of beginner comics, yeah. and there's some pros, but a it, lot of beginners who bring their friends. It's it's not oh, like, okay. it's not like open mic. It's it's one step above open mic. Barely right? a step yeah. above. So open mic. <laughs> does that does that audience tend to be yeah. more forgiving or less forgiving? More forgiving because yeah. they don't want to they don't want to embarrass their friend. Right. Okay. Yeah. Open mic's like the worst. You know that. I mean, open mic you have because who's in the audience? Other mm -hmm. comics waiting to get up and they're sitting on their iPads. Their you know their iPhones. All you see is people. And then they get up and they, what they do? They're trying to either try new material, right, or just stuff they should fucking have already done because they're sitting there. And yeah. It, it annoys me. Here's here's the stand up comic. I've got my iPhone and I'm just fucking basically reading it. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I hate that. I yeah. absolutely hate that. Yeah. Well, that's what the, yeah. If you can't memorize a seven and a half minute set or well, even Mike, a 10 minute set, I mean, the, normally three minutes. But that's the great thing about old yeah. Mike. You don't have to memorize it. You just walk up on stage and look at your phone and try the joke and then look yeah. at the next joke and try it. It's old Mike. Nobody Come gives on. a shit. But uh, the bringer show, the problem with the bringer show is in, in a lot of people that they produce these bringer shows, the biggest problem is they don't put enough pros you get, first of all, you got to have a pro MC if you're going to have a bringer show, mm. and, because you got to have somebody who's going to get the people going and, and put some other pros in there too. Yeah, you've you know? got you you've got you've got to put you put a couple bringers, then you put a real pro, 
and then you put a few, a couple more beginners. And but the one I saw, one of the shows, I thought I don't, I think it might have been that one, but I'm not sure. It was bringer, bringer, bring. There was not one pro on the entire yeah show. No, no, mm. that's just like open mic. It's devastating. Yeah. No, it's worse yeah. because everybody's quiet. <laughs> It's like it's just silent the whole freaking time. Not good. And an actor will get up and do a monologue instead of stand up. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's no. They, no. They you know they rehearse this character they they think is going to kill. Oh my god. And it's just like, oh dude. We Please. had we had Jeff Richards on who uh oh, who was good. hilarious, right? Saturday night live and stuff. But I mean, he came on and and he he just channeled his little English guy. So he was from England that day and he just did not break character. So we just went with it. It was a fun show. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> he didn't break the whole no, thing. I mean, not once. Wow. And it's like, okay, I'm impressed. Yeah. Very good. And yeah. you, you know, I thought you'd be Lucifer today the whole time, but no, I think the wine's got Lucifer a little bit more. And loose. Loose. <laughs> loose, loose. Loose Lucifer. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Isn't Lucifer already loose, though? He's kind of. So what do you got? What do you got coming up, Mark? Anything? Well, I've been working on the old Supernatural and, and a show. Right, well, hold a on show. a second. Does that mean you're, you know, right now I know you're where you back. are. You're, you're going to be in and out of it, right, for a while, I hope? Yeah, well, I, I may be coming back again for another awesome fisticuffs. We'll see. I mean, um, how do you kill Lucifer, first of all? You can't kill you Lucifer. Can't, well, you can't. Well, I mean, well, you hold can, on. Well, yeah, I don't know if you can kill the archangels. I forget what the mythology is. You can kill angels. Yeah, you but can you, kill demons. But I don't know if the archangels, you just send them some other place. Mm. Is God ever going to make an appearance on this show? Lucifer's too powerful. Lucifer's very powerful. He's he too is. powerful. Only God can kill and, him. And now there's that other thing, though. There's Amara, the, the darkness, darkness yeah. who's equally powerful to God. So... It's very possible that Amara could kill Lucifer. Ooh. Well, that's right. Lucifer, Lucifer was the last one, according to Lucifer, that actually put her down, locked her ass yeah. up. Yeah. But it was Lucifer and the other archangels and God versus Amara. Yeah. Uh, Which that, would tell you what a woman does to your life, right? right? Uh -huh. See, the whole angel thing, I love that premise, that concept. You know, fallen angels, because they're, they were, they're jealous because God doesn't talk to them anymore and all that kind of, The prophecy. I just watched the prophecy series with Christopher Walken. Just now? Yeah, I just, well, you know. I have to revisit it. I haven't seen yeah. it in oh, years. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. It's, Christopher Walken's so good, man. He's really good. Oh, my God. He could read the phone book and be good. Yeah, absolutely. So I read that he, he takes all the punctuation out of... Well, you know, that is, a, that is the first way that you learn to memorize text in a Meisner class, <laughs> is to just take your dialogue, yeah. not theirs, take out all the punctuation, memorize it by rote as one long, continuous sentence... And that way you never get in your head about the way it's supposed to be said. Yep, yep. Uh, but you have to really be kind of... Um, it's kind of pushing a reset button. Yeah, yeah. and you have to be uh, very confident. Yeah. Because you can't control any aspect of your performance when you do it that way. And that, that's pretty cool. It is really I cool. I use it as a technique sometimes if I feel like I'm getting into habits. Stuck into, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to get into any habits. You wanna... So how long are you down in the uh, La La area for uh, till a couple of weeks, and I got to go back up north. And then uh, Quantico said they have a pin in me for an, another episode or so. Down you the got line. what seven episodes already? Six, seven episodes? Something like, Something that. like that. Yeah, yeah, seven or eight. Good show. You like him? I do. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, I'm military. I was military. You know that. It's. Does anybody look military in that show besides uh, no. Jakey? No, <laughs> no. Nobody does. Well, you know, Jake is real military. I know that. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Jake's the real deal. Yeah. But uh, he's a great guy, too. But everybody else, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They're actors. Pretty. Pretty They're actors. all pretty. You know what? I mean, uh, well, I forgot what network puts it on. Is it CW? No, that's, I want to say ABC. I mean, because it was a CW. CW, you'd all be, that's all they cast. You'd all be is models. You'd all be right? young models. That's right. Yeah, because that, that's all that goes. That's all they yeah, cast. Yeah, that's all that ever happens. And there are no other people. That's what I've heard. Yeah, genetically in the CW, they've just taken anyone who looks even normal and just taken them out. So since I've done a few shows for the CW, does that mean I come into that, fall into that category? You can, you I always can, feel like the ugly, know, ugliest guy. You started guy out on as a model. You told us Dude, that. You started a out a very bad one. <laughs> you know, you've had the same IMDb picture for the last twenty years. No, no, I had another one that was Did up you? There before that one. That, this that one's been about, here for a long that time. That one's about five years old. Is it five? It's yeah. been there you, a long you time. Haven't, you haven't changed though. Since I've saw, well, uh, since I first saw you okay, on Lost, I've changed. Danny, in no, he hasn't. He's, Luc I... he's Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> People say that. I'm, I'm glad because I yeah, look in no, the mirror and I see, I see myself getting old. Oh. Really? Well, oh, we, we all do. You know? And I feel myself getting older. Yeah. Yeah. I used, to, I used to be very active, and I feel like I'm slowly turning towards it, a sedentary life. It happens. Really? It happens. But, but I, mean, I, I have a lot of injuries. Oh, okay. From sports. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, what what well, sports? 
I, I used to teach Taekwondo, and I used, to, really? I used to train with the Olympic Taekwondo team. Martial arts does it. Martial arts. Oh, I my God. I started martial arts when I was a kid. I, I used to do five hours of Kodenkan Jiu-Jitsu every day with my with my best friend, who was the same age as me, but was a so short on black belt. That, this explains, is, this is why your, we, that's, that explains your mental... This is why we bonded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I basically retired from all the martial arts as a knee yeah, well, that's good. Knee on in judo and jiu jitsu. Well, that's good. So, and then, but you know, you've I've, taken more falls than me. Then, oh my god, dude, it's very know, hellish. Look at I said if I if I could ever fucking rip off Marty McFly's little time machine, I'm gonna go back and do a do over in my body. Yeah, <laughs> right? right. I've had fifty. Well, my knee surgery will be my sixteenth surgery. Wow, major surgery. We don't count vasectomies and shit like that as a surgery, you know. I saw or teeth pulling. Well, good. No, I yeah. saw him one night. There was uh, outside of Sardo's karaoke bar. We hang out there once in a while. There was this young military dude who was just basically blowing Len off. Like, uh, he's like, oh. He was he, being a dick. He's like, whatever. And Len, did, he, all of a sudden, Len goes, push, 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 and he does all these moves it's faster than I could even see. And he had the guy, he could have had the guy, like, knocked him out in a second. And the kid was drunk. He goes, yeah, all well, right, old man. The, the, I'm like, you're an idiot. He could have just decked The guy you. was fucking with me, and he kind of annoyed me a little bit. And, I, you know, I came close, but you know how you, you can control your punches. You come back, and you just, just you touch a little bit. You just maybe, just the skin. You don't, I never hit. Never, never. I think the the control after 23 years, if you fucking hit somebody in martial arts, you just never do it again because that's just the it's wrong. You you have not actually studied your art. Okay, so well, see, unfortunately, I I trained with people that thought the way to learn martial arts was punch to you? hit and be <laughs> and get hit. Well, no, uh, you need to learn to control that. Yeah, well, I mean, there that's definitely a different strain, and and that is a, more the spirit of Budo in my in, in yeah, my exactly opinion, but. Uh, uh, I I came up in a different world, and and that's why I think I have so many issues. I've got um, balance issues from getting punched in the <laughs> in the head a little bit too too many times, and, and that's the one thing you never know. No. One punch could be could be your your limit for getting hit. Yeah, in the head. But don't get me wrong. I've had my upper lip stuck through my bottom teeth in matches and stuff like that. That's I mean, a rough you know, business. It is. I mean, I was actually promoted to showdown because um, my okemi, my break fall. Should have snapped my spine. That's how violent it was. Wow. And yep. that, that was in the Paris Internationals. Most of my injuries See, are from volleyball. Now, in Code and Con, <laughs> in, in Code and Con Jiu-Jitsu, I only got to the rank of green belt. I was going to test for my brown belt. But uh, let me just... Because my teacher was my friend, and I trained with him uh, at my house on mats before he brought me into school, I trained with him for about four or five months. People could take that the wrong way, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter, guys. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when he first brought me into a school, I was an eighth Q white belt, and uh, he brought me up to demonstrate a throw in front of his class that were f- white belts, purple belts, green, up all the way up to brown. And uh, he threw me like a like he would throw a black belt, and the whole class just kind of <laughs> shuddered. Well, when he threw me into my rank for green belt, he threw me. He did he did this horrible sumo sumo goshi throw where he kicked his hips up. Oh and yeah, my and I almost landed on my head. I just barely. Oh god! And and, and, and he said before he did is, "I'm going to kill you." And I and, oh my god. and so I envisioned in my scared little seventeen year old mind getting thrown into brown belt. And if green belt was this bad, brown belt was going to be worse, and black belt even worse than that. Oh, right, right. So I said, this is enough, enough for me. I already dislocated my shoulder with him. And I don't blame I you. I got stabbed when we were working with oh real, real knives. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we well, used I know to, how that feels. We, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, but at least the person who stabbed you was pretty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I got two guys stab me last year. <laughs> oh, really? Walking my dog at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yep. It yep. got jumped and got the shit kicked out of me, right? Yep. Not, and uh, got stabbed in the uh, left chest. Not to, not, ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Yep. Not to advocate for something illegal, but what about carrying something? Well, you know, here's the deal. Okay. I'm a, a you know, I'm a retired law enforcement. Mm-hmm. I can carry a gun in all 50 states. Oh, okay. And I'm, and I've been range master also. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm very well trained. However, when I, I'm a firm believer is I came home from the Magic Castle that night and we had mm-hmm. drinks. I don't believe that when you have Velcro on your system, you need to be carrying a firearm. Okay. okay. And it was Burbank, for crying out loud. And, and, yeah, seriously, well, seriously, I'm the first guy mugged in, in my area in seven years. Hello. At least seven years. I went and bought lotto tickets that year, but <laughs> that day. But yeah, but yeah so, that's, uh, so that was an interesting thing. But my dog got a piece of him, and I do carry a knife, and I, I got one of them, but they got me. So, uh-huh. you know. It was very interesting having a knife stuck in your chest. Though. Uh, you like, know, I yeah. watched a, I watched a video uh, about how to defend against knife attacks, 
and it was ex- I don't know why I watched it. I think I was I was searching for something else and happened on this thing. And uh, real knife attacks bear no resemblance to the way you learn to defend against yeah, knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In watch the, in prison the videos. Watch prison videos. That's you'll find out. It is horrific. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you even if you're even if you're yeah. armed and you yeah. manage to get your you're firearm not, out, it's not going to happen. It's probably you're probably not going to get a shot off accurately. Well, when you have two guys tackle, best you, way is to run. Two, two guys tackle you in the dark when you don't see them. You know, and, and you know, police said, "Well, what did they look like?" Well, they look like a blur with hoodies. Black oh, hoodies. wonderful. Yeah. So I mean. It doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you're Bruce Lee. Well, maybe Bruce Lee in a good movie can do this. I wonder. No, I wonder. I think if anything, mixed martial arts showed us that in its very early stages when they started having the cage matches, that you go in there with this set idea of what a martial art is, you're going to get your head handed to you by a street fighter. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 (laughs) It just doesn't go down that way in real life. No. So as we we wind this wonderful podcast down. Where can we find you? Where can people find you? Well, on social media. On social media. Um, no, uh, where's your home? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did get, we did get a package directly from somebody from Federal Express. A schizophrenic fan sent Ooh. us, sent us a, a, a package with a note. Uh, apparently the Federal Express was hold, uh, holding her hostage and we needed to, to get her free. So somebody knew our address. Our, wow. Somehow our, our address gets out there in the world. It's not, not so impossible to find. But they could find me on Twitter. I mean, that's the, the main social media that I use. Uh, it's just Mark Pellegrino. Uh, like the water? Like the water. Yeah. No and relation? It's a big check by my no relation, unfortunately. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad, because we can <laughs> make some so movies. Rich. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I drink Pellegrino. That's all I drink is Pellegrino water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope I get a point for Only that. Only because you, even yeah. though you're not getting the money for <laughs> you, you should. Yeah. Um, but they can find me on Twitter, and you know it has a check by my name and my picture, and, uh, and they can see my little uh, my little bio there, and and click on the American Capitalist Party and I see if there's gonna, something I was going to go there. there. I'm going to check there. that out. I, I, I did yesterday. I honestly, like you say a lot of great things. I wanted uh, to honestly, ask- if you're pissed off at the Republicans and you're pissed off at the Democrats. And and you haven't figured out what what libertarians are, and uh, you don't know what independent is. This is honestly, it's the best of all worlds, right there. Where you where you put it together really well, Mark. Oh, thank you. No, I, I'm serious. I think, I think you're right. I think I think the humanists on the left and the people on the right who are who are interested in 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 their well being are and not not you know so driven by social issues, but. You know, would rather just live their lives, or by Facebook posts, uh, you're right? <laughs> well, I mean, the, 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 I think all those people are going to. I mean, I, I find say myself, I'm, I'm a fiscal conservative, socially sane. There you go. Is that a good way to describe it? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, because isn't that what the constitutional that, it, that our fathers, forefathers envisioned? Right. It's just it's just a consistent it's just a consistent view of individual rights being the primary thing that the government is is out to protect. Are, are you a big fan of the Federalist Papers? Yeah, I am too. So sure. Yeah, people need like, what are they? I yeah. just wanted to show you my grouping. This was after okay. 10 years of not shooting. Oh, nice shot. It's thir- 35 feet away. Rapid fire with my, uh, with my SIG. So for all you people not on video today. Oh, I mean, not on. Uh, yeah, I can't see us. Because it's a, not, Don't get in front yeah. of his gun. Yeah, I'm looking at, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at um, a nice blue human, right? And um, he just pretty much took out uh, the aorta and most of the guy's heart and then... Uh, most of his nose, yeah. He's talking about a blue drawing. Yeah, of a, bl- a blue Just drawing. So you know. A blue drawing. <laughs> not, not, a blue drawing. Not, not a human who is suffocating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or, a blue drawing. Drowned. But uh, yeah, I would not. Uh, I would not piss Mark off in front of a weapon. That's not. A, look at that. Wow. Yeah, Danny, you're wow. wearing, you're wearing blue. Want to go out in the parking lot? That's oh, good. never mind. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Great shooting, dude. Thank you. When was how this? far was that from? That was 35 feet with my SIG uh, 220, which is a pistol. You're never going to really use oh, a pistol. My favorite six, weapon. 12 feet. My favorite weapon. It's my favorite. Yeah, it is. I've got two of them. Well, you, actually, you, you, know, you actually have four of them, technically. But you, I, you promised to take me shooting, by the way. Yeah, but you make me so angry. I'm not sure if I'm going to hang you for the target. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. I, well, I'm joking. Danny and I do this all the time, as you all know. <laughs> if all 12 of you that listen to us know. Yes. Right? All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. Mark Pellegrino, an amazing actor and a good friend. Yeah. Mark, Mark, thank you for, uh, first of all, your friendship. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that, thank you. that means most uh, to me. Uh, I'll share my wine with you anytime and my bullets. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it's great to meet you, having seen yeah. you so many times and uh, admired your work. Oh, thanks. Uh, nice to meet it's you. It's great to meet and, you. And guys, if okay. you haven't, if you don't know who Mark is, go look him up, IMDB. And, and if you're a good fan of Supernatural or any of the things we were talking about, I mean, he's an amazing actor. Go there. And if you find him in something you don't know, go watch it. Because honestly, he's quality. He's a quality person, quality actor. Great stuff. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass. I don't have to, right, Mark? <laughs> right. On. I just wouldn't yeah. talk about it if I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. if I didn't really like your work, I wouldn't I wouldn't even talk about it. I'd oh yeah, Ryan. Like, How's your home life? Yeah. <laughs> right Ryan in the booth is yawning right now, so that's my cue to go. Ryan, thank you for yawning. Thank you can you have Ryan. some wine Thanks, later. Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. All right, until next week, guys. It's an hour of attention deficit order with Mick and Mac. Tell your friends, tell your wife, yeah, we tell like your ex wife. We need thirteen thirteen people listening. So yeah, come yeah, on guys, let's at least get going. A, tell at least a few a few yeah. uh it's criminals. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Tell, tell everybody. Don't tell criminals. Okay. Yeah. Right. No, that's okay. They're, they're listeners. All right. We're out of here. All right, bye. All right, thanks. Bye.